It's time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online for all your website needs at sonicwebstudios.com. The Mike Wagner Show brings you interesting people doing interesting things all the across the globe. Now, let's get started on the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com. Dr. Philip Slotkin, the greatest nose job man in the entire universe and Beverly Hills. Your Highness. Nose job? I don't understand. She's already had a nose job. It was a sweet 16 present. No, it's not what you think. It's much, much worse. If you do not give me the combination to the air shield, Dr. Slotkin will give your daughter back her old nose. <laughs> I think you remember that one, Sandy. That was a very good part. And um, introducing live from the coast of Southern California, Sandy Halberg. Sandy, good morning. Hey. Thanks for joining us here. Oh, thanks for uh, allowing me to join you there and allowing me to stay here. Oh, that is fantastic. Yes. And of course, you know, we've admired your work. And of course, you've worked with Mel Brooks and quite a few films. Of course, um, Spaceballs, you had that. Uh, Dr. Schlotkin, you know, doing a nose right. job. And, um, and of course, you know, I've got a big nose. Maybe you can do a nose job on me on that one. I like, to, I like you to do that on me one day. <laughs> no, no, I had a big nose and had it fixed, but it did grow back. So it's, uh, sometimes it can be useless. Well, that's a good thing in senses, too. And also, you've also been in High Anxiety, History of the World. and um, Yeah. So you've also had a really good career, too. So how did you get hooked up with Mel Brooks in the first place? Well, uh, a friend of ours, uh, an actor named uh, uh, Jack Riley, who um, used to be, he was in a couple of Mel Brooks films in the old Bob Newhart show. He played, uh, what was his name, Mr., uh, you know, I don't know if you know the old uh, Bob Newhart show. I am familiar with it, but I'm trying to think of the name itself, and I'm still trying to drink my coffee here. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Although it's 11 o'clock here Central Time, I still need my coffee, so... Well, I'll it's look that up here. So, um, it's this early, but anyway, he was uh, Mr. Carlin. Mr. Know, Carlin, like, okay. Yeah, so he had done. He did a couple of movies with Mel, and he and I were friends. And he liked me, and thought Mel would like me, and so <clears throat> he set up a meeting uh, for me to go to Mel's office and meet him. And uh, look, I couldn't believe it. You know that I was going to go in and meet Mel Brooks, who was my idol growing up. So I go into his office at 20th Century Fox, and his office from the door to his desk is about a block long. And uh, and I'm walking, and I'm thinking, God, he's looking at me. He's not going to like me. He's smiling. He's not smiling. It's taking me too long to get there. And I finally get there, and I'm a little out of breath. And uh, we just start to talk, you know. We just start to kibitz, and I made him laugh, which was, I was ready to retire. That's it. I made Mel Brooks laugh. I can quit show business now. I've done what I wanted to do. So as we talked, he said, uh, you know, I like you. I will give you a small part in this movie. And I'm going to give you a very small part. And, uh, and that was it. And he uh, then called me to come in and do um, uh, History of the World and uh, Spaceballs. Oh, those so, uh, are fantastic movies. Those are one of the best. And um, also, too, you're in High Anxiety as well, too. So um, give us a little yeah, part was, about in High Anxiety. That was the first one I did. It, it was a small part. It was when they were going through uh, uh, airport security, he and Madeline Kahn, and uh, they set the radar thing off. And uh, I have them, you know, dancing around, and they're trying to get out of uh, security. But... Uh, with the big noise Mel makes, I just let them go. And uh, so that was that. But it was fun, and he lets us improvise. And it's, it, you know, it's pretty, he gives you a lot of freedom. And then uh, he pulls back to make sure nothing is meandering or wandering, that everything is tight. And that's what, uh, and in Spaceballs, <clears throat> there was a line that I improvised that he liked. When I leave with the caddy, I say, I'm going to go home and work on my putts. <laughs> and Mel loves the line, and he comes over to me and he says, you know, that's a good line, but i got to give it to Rick Moranis because he's the star of the movie, and he has to end the scene. And I thought, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, but he says, I owe you one. 
So I came back to him later that day, and in Spaceballs, when the movie goes black, it comes back up, and I had an idea that when it comes back up, I'll be making out with the nurse in the back. And uh, he liked it. I liked it. I don't know how the nurse liked it, because I kept having them do it over and over again. But uh, uh, so that's, you know, that's uh, it was a, an, an even trade. And, uh, and like I said, he just uh, he gives you a lot of freedom. If it's good, he'll do it. If it stinks, he'll tell you. Well, I'm sure they'll let you know as well, too. And, of course, you know, the nurse would probably be like, oh, no, do I have to do this again? And, of course, if I did several times, it's like, what part yeah, do we she, not she understand? Said, <laughs> she's saying, wait a minute, this is not in the script. And I said, no, I just made it up. You know, I told her if she didn't uh, relax, I could make up something worse. But uh, anyway, she went with it, and, and it was a lot of fun. Like I said, Mel such a, a, a good guy. He would... Even when I, w- when I was finished working on a film, like in the uh, history of the world, he would call me and have me come down and meet Richard Pryor. And meet, uh, I'd spend the day and sit around with uh, Dom DeLuise and uh, uh, Shecky Green and Ron Carey and all these actors and just uh, schmooze with them. So it was, really, it was really great. Originally, Richard Pryor was supposed to be in uh, history of the world. And he came down the day before, and Mel showed me around with him. And then the next day, he caught himself on fire. Oh, my. Oh yes, I remember about that. Of course, yeah. th- things will have been different with Richard Pryor. But I guess with all the things you've uh, done with Mel Brooks, what's probably your most favorite ever you've done? Uh, with him, uh, I'm trying to think high anxiety. Well, high anxiety was great because I got to work with Madeline Kahn and Mel. Uh, thinking space balls. Probably, I would have to say uh, space uh, space ball. Actually, history of the world because I also got to work with John Hurt, and uh, he played Jesus, and I was in the uh, Last Supper scene. Originally, in in uh, history of the world, he, I played Einstein, and uh, we shot this scene with me as Einstein and Mel as Hitler, and another guy as Freud. And we were singing and dancing, and uh, he looked at it, and he called me two weeks later. He said it, he, it, it didn't work. He cut the thing out of the movie, but he was doing this Last Supper scene, and he'd like me to play Matthew the Apostle, and I came in, and John Hurt played Jesus, and he was great. It was, and, you know, we had, like, sort of adjoining dressing rooms at the end of the day, uh, we opened up the curtain, and we just spent the night drinking and talking and laughing. And I never did ask him to get up and do an impression of the elephant, man. I thought that might be a little, <laughs> pushing it just a little bit. But uh, So, you know, every experience uh, is, you know, I just make the most out of it. You know, uh, grateful to get to work with these people and... Uh, you know, it's a uh, uh, it's it's a great experience, and Mel is fun, and I run into him out here every once in a while, and he's still moving, he's active, he's running. You know, the man never stops. We'll be back with more after this on the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everyone, it's Mike Wagner from the Mike Wagner Show. If you like what we play, if you love great guests and enjoy lots of fun, then how would you like to be a sponsor of my show? We're looking for businesses to be part of the great show and a great way to let people know about what you do. If you're a singer, writer, actor, author, or an interesting person with a great product and looking for exposure, you've come to the right place. Call me or text at 701-301-7705 or email to mike at themikewagnershow.com and I'll get you set up with the right sponsor package. Don't delay. Do it today. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blows the competition away. Call today at 800-303-3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Now. Back to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by sonicwebstudios.com. It's also interesting, too, that you mentioned about um, the Hitler scene as well, too, in the um, history of the world. And maybe think of the movie The Producers, which is also by Mel Brooks, and the original title of it was Springtime for Hitler. So 
you know, with the producers and everything else, another classic, maybe you can just talk about that if you've been involved with it somehow or your thoughts on the movie. On which? Uh, uh, the, the producers. producers. Yes. Oh, I thought it was, you know, he had such a great cast. The actors were terrific. And like everybody else, uh, when, I, when we went to see it, at first you're surprised. But for me, uh, because my parents uh, were Holocaust survivors, but the thing is, and I've talked to Mel about it, and he said it before, he doesn't make fun of the Holocaust. He makes fun of Nazis, mm -hmm. which they need to be made fun of. And uh, so, uh, but I do a solo show called You Can Only Blame So Much on the Holocaust. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has to do with my parents surviving. And uh, I was born in Germany and we came to the United States. And, you know, I had my own little Holocaust growing up in Ohio <clears throat> as an outsider, as a Jew from another country, spoke with an accent. When I was like seven, eight years old, I spoke like Jackie Mason because my parents only spoke Yiddish to me in the house. So I'd go outside and go, come on, boys, we play baseball. I hit the ball. We don't have the bases. And these rednecks would look at me and say, what the hell is he talking about? So, it's a uh, but they let me play baseball. I was home base, and uh, you know, and but it was difficult because uh, there was still a lot of anti-Semitism at that time. Mm -hmm. And I think my, I was a little guy. I wasn't athletic. I wasn't too great in school. But the only way I survived was uh, a sense of humor, and that's what helped get my father through the war. I mean, he was thirteen uh, when he went into the camps, and he was there for six years. And uh, he told me uh, a long time ago, when I started doing comedy, he said, you know, I was the funniest guy in the camp. And I said to him, now that's a tough crowd. And so it's, it, it, uh, humor is uh, how people survive through tragedies and uh, terrible events. And, you know, after the war, as my father, he was a, a very funny guy, very sarcastic. And uh, luckily, I picked that up from him. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting, too. And, of course, with the times we're living in as well, too, what advice would you give to the um, young people out there these days, especially when they're trying to fit in? What advice would you give? Well, <clears throat> I don't think uh, if uh, that was my problem as a kid because I never fit in. I think if you just do what you want to do and not try to fit in, not try to bend and mold yourself to be like everybody else. If you do what you want to do, what you love to do, uh, you'll have friends. You know, it may not be those friends, but it'll be people that are interested in what you're doing, that have that in common. And, uh, or you'll just, uh, you know, those people will just gravitate towards you. But it's the thing of trying to blend in and you don't want to be like everybody else. And that's what uh, those social groups in high school were. So, uh, but I still, you know, I, I would come to school every day and these rednecks would be at my locker and they'd be waiting for me and calling me Jew and Jew. And every time I went to the locker, it was Jew, ah, Jew. And I offered to, for five bucks, I would write them new insults because these were just getting old. Uh, and, uh, I had the uh, football star, who was my friend, finally uh, uh, threaten them, and they never bothered me after that. But uh, it's, it is very difficult. It's, it was very oppressive because, again, I was uh, small. And uh, I think that's why most Jewish comics are short, because they had to defend themselves. And, mm -hmm. uh, and they did it with uh, humor, with comedy. And, of course, they also relate, too, to um, what's going on as well, too, and... Um you know, you know, just to give you guys simply a lot of credit. You've also been in other films, too, like Hollywood Nights, Up the Creek. You also wrote and produced some programs. And uh, maybe you can just tell us some of the highlights uh, that you have done as well and what work has stood out in terms of writing, acting, you know, besides uh, Mel Brooks. Well, uh, my wife and I were writing TV, and our first writing assignment was for The Golden Girls. And we were thrilled. You know, I mean, it, it's a great show. It was our first professional writing job, and it was the 100th episode. And so uh, <clears throat> it was great to meet the ladies. And, uh, and then from there, <clears throat> we went on to write Perfect Strangers and Dear John and, 
you know, uh, some of those shows. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Up the Creek, that was, uh, you know, everything I did was a ripoff of something else. That was a ripoff of, like, Animal House and Rafts. Mm-hmm. I went rafting. And, uh, again, I had a lot of freedom to improvise. And uh, f- for me, that's the best is to be able to improvise and have some freedom. But the physical part of it was very scary, having to raft down a river. Uh, I never would get my feet wet, let alone get into a raft. And Stephen First and I, the late Stephen First, he was such a, a good guy who just passed away, um, who was in Animal House. <clears throat> we were the last two to go down the rapids because we were scared to death. But once we did go down, we were good. They couldn't get us out of the raft. <clears throat> we were actually too good when we shot the first scene. We're supposed to be the nerds and the dopes. And we came down that river like the Olympic team. And the, dir- <laughs> the director yelled, cut, and he said, you know, you guys are supposed to be the goofy ones. So he wanted us to, you know, be waving paddles in the air and hitting each other in the head. And But we proved it to ourselves. We were good, you know. It, it sounds so, uh, like it makes me want to go rafting. It's like, I love to do that. Uh, you know, I... Never even thought of it, but afterwards, like I said, I liked it, and uh, um, but I don't know if I would do it again now. But uh, and they had amazing special effects. They had built a, an exterior of a house, and in the movie, there's an explosion where the river gets diverted, and it goes through this house. They had tanks with thou- hundreds of thousands of gallons of water, <clears throat> and they opened up those tanks, and they just tore through the house, uh, and in the movie, we're in our raft, and we go through the house, off the deck, and they're like 30 feet in the air, and the raft comes crashing into the river. Of course, I was standing on the side watching my stunt guy do that, mm-hmm. because, uh, and, and I wasn't uh, real excited about being in the water anyway, but uh, Every time we had to jump out of the raft, I made sure I was the last one in case it didn't go well and he yelled, cut. I didn't jump in and have to get back out. But, uh, and then at one point, I thought I was going to drown. I had jumped out, <clears throat> got pinned under the raft, and the raft started going towards the waterfalls, and I couldn't get myself detached from the raft. <clears throat> and I could see down the river the stuntmen and the divers looking for me. And it's uh, it's hard to yell underwater, so uh, <clears throat> finally I figured it out and I back paddled and I came up and uh, survived. I thought that's all I need to see in variety, you know. Uh, Jew actor drowns in B movie, mm. and, uh, <clears throat> but uh, it uh, uh, turned out okay. I had a little hypo uh, hypothermia, but it, it, the making of the movie was like Animal House. The insanity that went on behind the cameras. It was like they let loose a bunch of animals in a, in a summer camp. <laughs> or frat boys, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, we came in and took over this little town, Bend, Oregon, and they used the college students as extras, so they were all over the place. And we were there almost three months, so we had to stock up the liquor store with special booze and special cigars and the stuff they didn't have. And... Uh, the town made a lot of money off the movie because we were all in hotels, and uh, it just was uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, we were isolated uh, from everybody else. And when we came home, we were like uh, Vietnam veterans. We were all shaky. We were nervous to meet our, see our wives again and girlfriends. And But uh, we finally uh, came down from it and moved on uh, uh, to reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that's a good... Other- that's a good thing, too. And uh, just one more thing before we let you go. When you got a busy schedule, you have any upcoming projects or uh, any, any new updates for you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, doing that solo show. You can only blame so much on the Holocaust. And that's at a theater, the Groundlings Theater. I don't know if you ever heard of the Groundlings. I've uh, heard of them, yes. Yeah, they're an improv group that had most of Saturday Night Live uh, cast has come from. And I was one of the original Groundlings. And so... I've been doing shows there, and uh, I'm going to do a commercial for American Airlines uh, that I just got yesterday. So, you know, you do what you can, and uh, 
Meanwhile, my wife and I are raising uh, our two-year-old granddaughter, which is exhausting. Oh, very nice. Yeah, yeah, most of the time it is very nice. That's a very good thing, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sandy, well, it's great talking to you, and um, best of luck in all your adventures, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Okay, have a good weekend. You've been listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios at themikewagnershow.com. Visit sonicwebstudios.com today for all your web design needs. If you would like to be a sponsor of The Mike Wagner Show, call or text at 701-301-7705 or email to mike at themikewagnershow.com. If you're a listener and would like to support our program, visit themikewagnershow.com and click on the support button and donate today. Thanks for listening and tune in again next time on The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com.